In previous videos, we explained the analysis of variance test to compare the means of more than two populations, which requires that the populations be normally distributed and with equal variances. The cross cold wallis test is a non-parametric alternative for situations where the ANOVA assumptions are not satisfied. The only requirements of the cross cold wallis test are the K samples are random and independent, there are five or more measurements per sample, and the probability distributions are continuous. Now, let's suppose we have three samples and we want to find out if the three probability distributions are identical or if at least two of the three probability distributions differ in location. The next step is to calculate the test statistic and it's going to be similar to what we did for the Wilcoxon rank sum test. What we do is put all the observations together, all of them together, and sort them from smallest to largest. We have 18 of them. And here in the second row, we're going to put only the numbers from 1 all the way to 18. But now we have to take care of ties, if we have any. I see that in here we have a triple tie. Okay, So 8.2 is going to get rank 1, 8.4 is going to rank, get rank 2. Now there is no reason for these three 9.1s to get different ranks. So what we do is add the ranks, divide them by 3, you're going to get 4 when you do that, so each one of them gets rank 4. And this one will get rank 6, 7, I don't see any more ties, 8, 9, 11, not 11, 10, 10, 11, 12, I don't see any more ties, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Okay, so now these are the ranks on the third row. We only have to transfer them to here. We're going to put the ranks here. Ranks, ranks, and ranks. Okay. So we found out that 8.2 gets rank 1. So I'm going to put that 1 there and that 8.4 got rank 2, so 8.4 gets rank 2. All these three 9.1s are going to get rank 4, so I'm going to put rank 4 here, rank 4 there, rank 4 there, and keep on doing it with all the observations. So this is how it looks like after we have transferred all the ranks to these columns. Now, the next task is to add the ranks for the first sample, the ranks for the second sample, and the ranks for the third sample. We are going to call them R1, R2, and R3. And what I got was 43, 61, and 67. And our test statistic is H, which is equal to 12 divided by N times N plus 1. N is the total number of observations in the combined sample, times the sum for I equals 1 to K, but K in our problem is 3, which is the number of populations, the number of samples. And um, this is a sum that I'm going to expand like this. It's going to be 12 over n times n plus 1. And what this means is r1 square over n1 plus r2 square over n2 plus r3 square over n3. That's what this formula means. Minus 3 times n plus 1. 
So all we have to do is plug these values in here, which is going to be 12 divided by 18. It doesn't look very readable. 18 times 18 plus 1, which is 19. And then I'm going to have 43 square over n1, which is 6, plus r2 square, which is 61 square over 6 also, because n2 is also 6, and r3, which is 67 square over 6, minus 3 times n plus 1, which is 19. We just have to do it with the calculator. And let's see what we get. That gave me 1.82. This is our test statistic. The next statistic, the next step, which is step number three, as usual, will be to find the rejection region. And um, for the Kroskow-Wallis test, we use the chi-square distribution and the rejection region will be will be the values of H, our test statistic, that are greater than the chi-square critical value for whatever value of alpha we are using and the degrees of freedom which is going to be K minus 1. So let's say that we're using alpha equals 0 0.05 and the degrees of freedom is going to be k minus 1, which is 2, because k is 3. So we are going to look this up in the chi-square table. In the um, chi-square table, what you have to do is look up the column for alpha equals 0 0.05 and the degrees of freedom tells you the row. So the um, critical value is going to be 5.99, etc. Which means that now we know that the rejection region is the values of the test statistic H that are greater than 5.99. Now the next question is going to be, does the test statistic fall in the rejection region? That will be step number four. And the answer is, of course, no. The test statistic doesn't fall in the rejection region. The chi-square distribution looks something like this. The critical value is 5.99, which means that our rejection region is going to be this region here. And the test statistic is only 1.82. So, nope, it doesn't fall in the rejection region, so our decision is to fail to reject HO. And our next step is the conclusion. Which is, the data provide insufficient evidence at alpha equals 0.05, to conclude that at least two of the three probability distributions differ in location. And that's it. That's the um, Kroskow-Wallis test.